Number 25. A projectile is launched at ground level with an initial speed of 50 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. It strikes a target above the ground three seconds later. What are the X and Y distances uh, from where the projectile was launched to where it lands? All right, so let's just sketch a quick picture. So first let's draw a diagram. And by diagram, I mean a coordinate system. So our X axis and our Y axis, uh, the X axis is the horizontal. So what they're giving us is they're giving us a degree measure, 30 degrees above the horizontal. So they're giving us um, the degree measure in reference to the positive X uh, axis. And the vector would look something like this. Okay. Now basically all the, what we were doing in all the past problems of this chapter was kind of setting you up for this now. All right. So all of these components, the X and the Y's, uh, they become extremely important in doing this problem. All right. So um, this angle right here was 30 degrees. And it gives us a magnitude of the vector. It says it's going to be 50.0, right, meters per second. So 50.0. Okay. Now what's going to happen is this thing is going to, right, travel some distance. I don't know where it's going to actually hit the target, by the way. I don't know if it's going to be hit the target on the way up or the way down, but I'm just going to say it's going to hit it on the way down. So it hits the target right here, right? And its flight time was three seconds. So the time it was in the air is three seconds. All right. So what we need to do is we need to break this problem up into X and Y components. All right. So anytime you have a vector that is in both the X and the Y plane, like we do, we have to think and break up that vector into X and Y components. All right. It's very important. So let's draw the X component here on the graph of this vector. That would be the uh, X component. I'll label that X. And then the Y component would look um, something like this. Right, it would go, well, it's a little angled. It would go straight up, right? So that's my Y component. That has an arrow up, and then this one has an arrow on over. Okay, perfect. Let me just erase this so we don't get confused with that black X. Okay. So now let's solve for the uh, X component, meaning the X velocity. All right, I know this hypotenuse, I know this side, I'm looking for the side adjacent to that angle, therefore I'm going to use cosine. So cosine of theta is equal to 30, to, uh, excuse me, is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So cosine of 30 degrees will equal x over 50, and now just cross multiply. So my x component here uh, will be cosine 30 times 50, and it works out to 43.3. So we've got 43.3 meters per second. That's the x velocity, right? So actually, let me just backtrack and let me just make this a little smaller. All right. So now I'm going to call this uh, more specifically, I'm going to call this vx. All right. Because that's the velocity in the x direction. Now let me calculate my y component. All right. So we have a hypotenuse, we know this angle and we want to solve for the side opposite of that angle. That is sine. So sine of theta is equal to the opposite side of the hypotenuse. So oops, sine of 30 will equal y over 50.0. So just cross multiply, right? Now let me make the little y there. Remember, it's going to be vy. Uh, so we got sine of 30 times 50. So it comes out to 25. All right, great. So we got 25 meters per second. Okay, now what I need you to do is think about where we, where we are really working with two different frames, okay? To find horizontal distances and whatnot, okay, to find horizontal distances, we must always use Vx, okay? To find vertical distances, we must always use, or displacements, uh, we must always use vy or y components. Okay, do not mix the two. So in this particular problem, they want us to find, all right, they basically want us to find this, right, they want us to find the total distance here, the horizontal distance. Okay, so let me uh, denote this as, this is really finding the displacement of x, so x little x. Okay, what I'm going to change here, I'm going to just change that x to uh, represent v sub x. Okay. And what they also want me to find now is, uh, since this was the axis, right, in which the problem was given, 
they want me to also find the um, vertical height, right? So what they want me to find is this vertical height here. It's a little crooked. Try one more time. There we go. They want me to find now x sub y. Okay, for x stands for displacement and y uh, will represent displacement in the y direction. So if I want to find now x sub x or the x distance, what do I need to know? Well, let's write down what we do know. All right. So we know that velocity in the x direction initially was 43.3 meters per second. We just calculated that. We don't know the x displacement, so that's a question mark. What's the acceleration, by the way, in the x direction? Well, it's zero, right? The only acceleration in this problem, once the projectile is launched, will be gravity, and gravity only acts in the y direction. So this is zero meters per second squared. And since there is no acceleration, guys, do we know the final velocity um, in the, I should say, do we know the final velocity in the x direction? Sorry, hold on. Yes, we do, right? It should be the same as the initial because there was no acceleration. So 43.3 meters per second. We also know the time, right? It was 3.00 seconds. So how do I find displacement? This is really straightforward, right? We can use the basic uh, velocity uh, formula, right? Where it says x sub x will be equal to v x over t, right? So displacement, oh, excuse me, what am I talking about? My apologies, right? Vx, the velocity is equal to the displacement over time. So the velocity here is going to be 43.3. I'm looking for x sub x, and it's three seconds. So just cross multiply to find the x displacement. So we got 43.3 times three, so it works out to be 130, if I consider significant figures. So there's 130 meters. So that's how far it goes in the x direction. Now let's take a look at the y direction. So let's write down all of our knowns for the y direction. So what's the initial velocity uh, in the y direction? Well, the initial velocity in the y direction is what we calculated before. That's the 25 meters per second. Now we're trying to find the height Right, so the displacement in the y direction, we're trying to find that. Um, do we know the acceleration in the y direction? Yes, remember that's gravity, so it's negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Do we know the final velocity in the uh, y direction? Nope, don't know it. And what about the time? Time is the same, right? It's three seconds. Okay, so now take a look at what you're given. How do I find displacement? Let's use equation number two on the upper right-hand side. All right, so let's write that down. So we got change in the displacement of the y direction is equal to the initial velocity in the y direction times t plus one half the acceleration in the y times time. So we got the displacement in the y direction should be equal to 25. All right, I actually should have had two significant figures there. Uh, excuse me, three, so it should really be 25.0. Okay, 25.0 multiplied by time, which is three seconds, plus, so let me just write it underneath, plus one half times my acceleration of negative 9.8. Oh, I actually used 9.81 here. Every book, they, they have a different constant, so I always use 9.80, I think, in this text. So let me just change that, 9.80, and then multiply by time squared, so the time was three squared. So the change in displacement in the y direction will be now just do the math. So 25 times three, right? Plus 0.5 times negative 9.8 times three squared. And it works out to be 30.9. So we got 30.9 meters. So that is how far above the ground now the target hits. All right. And those two would be the final answers. So thanks guys for tuning in. Hope this helped. Remember, always break the problems up, especially if it's in two dimensions. You got to break it up into the components, both the X and the Y components, 
And then you have to basically think that, uh, think about the problem now as two separate but parallel problems. All right. Thank you so much. Please remember to subscribe until next time.